Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video today you are going to be watching something that I haven't been done since July 2019 I believe and that is a book collection. Now I'm going to be showing you all of my Doctor Who books apart from my target books because they're going to be a separate video which hopefully is going to be the next video so you'll see this video when it comes out and if you're fresh so if this video has been uploaded recently um, you can expect a target book an updated car target book collection my third one on this channel coming very soon and if you're watching this about you know six months after it's been uploaded be sure to check out my target book collection which has probably been uploaded in the future and I haven't even filmed it yet but Hey ho, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So just all my books other than Target, basically. So without further ado, let's get started. So we're going to start off right down this end and I will move the camera so you can see. So we have, uh, it's called Ace, basically, it's just called Ace. And it's a book written by Sophie Aldred on the inside story of the end of an era. So I haven't actually, I found I sound really bad because I've had it for years, quite a few years actually, and I've never really properly read it. Um, but it's definitely on my to-do list. Um, but it looks really good. It's by Sophie Aldred, so it's got to be amazing. I think it came out in the 90s. I genuinely am clueless, but it's pretty big. <laughs> and I don't know when I got it, but I remember it being a nice find when I did get it. Here we've got a uh, in their own words, which is like a companions, uh, it's like a doc, it's a special Doc Two magazine, I think, that came out quite a while ago, considering the logo that's on it. Um, but again, it's something I, ha that I haven't really looked at, but I, I think it's like Doctor Who actors from the 80s talking about, yeah, from the McCoy era actually, from 87 to 96, talking about their time on the show. So that's pretty interesting. I think I have skimmed through it, but not not in the right detail. Next, we've got The Monsters, which is a quite an old book, considering, again, the logo. Um, I think it goes, it's a big encyclopedia of classic monsters, um, which I have skimmed through, and it's really good, and the artwork quite is brilliant. Um, again, it's quite chunky and quite big. I assume it's quite rare now, actually, thinking about it. Um, but yeah, it's really nice to have, actually. We have Doctor Who Companions which is a book from the 1980s as you can see it's got perry tegan turlow k9 on the front um so yeah again it's a really good book um quite old and obviously outdated but interesting it's a pro proper hardback book as well uh, so we've got that and now we've got something that i do remember getting back in the day which is the Radio Times version of the Doctor Who Companions Guide, which came out when I first became a Doctor Who fan, actually, in, well, it must have been 2010, considering, you know, this is all Series 5 promotional stuff. Yeah, I've gone through this book so many times over the past decade. Really good, really enjoyable. There's basically a briefing of every companion up to Amy. Um, proper detail, detailed stuff. I don't know how much this goes for now, if it's even still around but really good definitely remember that one of my first memories of being a doctor who fan really is reading that now we're going on to the annuals and this just sounds really old but here we have the annual 2010 um i believe this was the first ever annual that i got you know when it was new i have got annuals dating back to 2007 however um i didn't get those obviously at the time but yeah, I got the annual 2010, which I don't remember getting. I probably got it Christmas 2009, um, when I literally first ever became a Who fan. This must have been one of the first ever pieces of merchandise I got. Um, but yeah, I don't really look at the annuals anymore. You'll, you'll tell later on that I don't actually buy the annuals anymore. Um, annual 2011, which again is a brilliant annual. Um, one that is so nostalgic for me. I've scribbled all over it because I must have been very young at the time. About seven or something. Um five six seven i don't know how old i was but yeah this has got little scribbles all over it and it's quite funny really we've got the following year annual 2012 again really good one probably got scribbles all over it it's getting a bit tight down here um 2013 again i love the covers on these are a lot more ominous you know than they are now um but yeah a nice annual um again i don't really look at these too often but this one's an interesting one i didn't really know where to place this in the collection but it's the 50th anniversary annual which i got for 3.99 um yeah i don't really remember much about this one apart from 
probably celebrates the 50 years of Doctor Who. Um, yeah, the annuals are quite hit and miss, aren't they? They're nice to have, but um, I didn't get the annual 2014 for some reason, so we're jumping straight on to 2015. I must have had like a gone off Doctor Who period at that point. Uh, but yeah, 2015, obviously, Capaldi on the front. I don't know what the cover was on the 2014 one. Um, maybe it was Capaldi, maybe it wasn't. The annual 2016, um, we've obviously from series 8 promotional stuff there. And 2017, there you go, you've got the classic hands on hips Capaldi there from series 9, I think, or it series 10, probably series 9. Um, oh, bear with me. And then obviously 2018, oh god. <laughs> Apologies for that. <laughs> I do return. Um, we've, got, we've got the annual 2018, which has Bill and Nardo on the front, which is quite a nice one. And then the final ever annual that I got, 2019. Um, yeah, this was really the, the sort of downfall of the annuals um, for me. They just got thinner and thinner, and you know I'm not bothering with the most recent ones. Um, but I know you can get them for like literally a pound in you know random shops across the country. And hey, if I ever stumble across one, I probably will pick it up if it's at a good price. But um, yeah, it's not something I ask for for Christmas anymore because, you know, that's what we all used to do, I think. <laughs> now we obviously finished the annuals, we're going on to Target books that aren't Target books. You'll see what I mean. So we have the Target book magazine from Doctor Who magazine, which they um, released last year or something like that. Yeah, really good encyclopedia into the Target books. Um, had to get it, obviously, because... You know, I'm a massive Target fan, as anyone knows. Um, yeah, really nice cover as well. Big Chris Aquilius painting blown up. This is one of my favourite books of all time now. And anyone who is remotely a Target book fan, I suggest you to get it. It is pricey. Um, however, it is the massive Target book by David J. Howe. Uh, it's obviously a massive history of the Target books. And in fact, I have it signed. I believe I can show you. Um, I got this at a, in a convention in um, 2017 when I met Sylvester McCoy. So it's signed to me and my dad by David J. Howe. And honestly, it's brilliant. I'll quickly flick through some play pages for you. Um, you guys got big. There's photos of Target books on every page, and it goes on for days. You can, you know, you can spend absolutely days reading this. Um, but basically, in conclusion, it's brilliant. So anyone who is a, a Target fan, I really do urge you to go and pick it up. Moving on, we have some older Target stuff now, back in the day. The Discovery books. So we've got Early Man, Space Travel, The Conquerors, and finally, The Monster Book, which is the personal favourite of mine. And the last sort of Target thing that isn't Target um, books is the massive Target storybook, which I got for Christmas 2019, which is lovely. Um, I'm about halfway through it. I haven't read a story in this book in a good good while. I've read the Jodie one and the first Doctor, second Doctor, third Doctor, fourth Doctor, but I've still got the other Doctors to get through. I'm really excited actually to read the fifth Doctor one, which is called The Dark River by Matthew Waterhouse, and I believe Colin Baker wrote his own story, so yeah, I've got a lot to look forward to. A new addition to the collection is the Peter Davison biography, which I got for Christmas this year. If you've been following my channel, you'll know that from my col Christmas collection update. Uh, yet to delve into this one, because I'm finishing, I like to read, you know, a couple of books at a time. So this one's in the queue, as it were, and very high on the queue. So yeah, I will be f hopefully starting this one this year. We've got the Doctor Who TARDIS Type 40 instruction manual, which is a lovely little book about the TARDIS. Um, you know, a bit underappreciated in my collection, to be honest. I don't go to this one as much as I probably should, because it is a very nice piece. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy to have it. Now we go on to, like, proper story books, if you were. Uh, so we've got Festival of Death, which I finished reading last year. Um, and it's actually, again, signed uh, by Jonathan Morris. I actually got this book from Jonathan Morris himself, because I sent him a fan letter um, praising him about his work. And he was very generous to send this to me um, as a free copy. And it's a brilliant book, actually. Um, oh, 
it took me quite a while to get through but that's not because it, the book's bad or anything it's just because that's how i read <laughs> we've got the now we are 600 poems book which again is a lovely book um full of poems i go to this one quite often a doctor who quick read called the silurian gift yeah a really lovely book um i remember reading this one when it was pretty much new about seven years ago it's only short but you know it was very good um it's got the it's the, the murka from the warriors of the deep they're in it as well we also have um some books i have never read the price of paradise um which again is a 10th doctor and rose book i you know you find these in school in school libraries don't you so i've definitely delved into this one in some english lesson for 20 minutes um but it's not a book i've read front back to front um but i've definitely i've definitely read bits of it um and then again we have sick building which is meant to be pretty bad actually but i've never read it and probably never will this this next piece is interesting because uh it was found at a car boot sale, I think, or some somewhere really obscure. Um, but it's just a collection of four books, and this is all going to fall, these books. Um, anyway, we'll just leave that there. Um, they've got Code of the Crillitane, which I've read probably about half of, or I think I've read it all. I'm not sure. Um, which was fine, nothing amazing. Autonomy, The Taking of Chelsea 4 to 6, and The Crillitane Storm. Um, yeah, I might read these one day. Again, they're not really high on my list. No David Tennant books are, to be honest. But hey, you know, if I really run out of books, which I doubt will ever happen, considering my massive Target collection, but hey, they're there if I want them. Uh, we also have now the 2017 books, which are some of my personal favourites. I'll just move the camera back because you won't be able to see them properly. There we go. Um, so we've got The Shining Man, which I have so much nostalgia reading about four years ago, because um, I read this on the way to um, a festival of some kind or a competition that I was participating in. Really random, I know. But yeah, really like this one. Like, really like this one. It's very good. Very good indeed. I probably really want to reread this one now, thinking about it. Oh, I really want to read, I really do really want to read, re oh, you know what I'm trying to say, I'm not even going to try and bother. Diamond Dogs, probably the weakest in the trilogy, but still very enjoyable. Um, I just remember it having lots of characters, um, and it being quite interesting. But again, it, it one that I'm more than happy to reread. And probably my favourite, Plague City by Jonathan Morris, which is probably the reason why I sent him the fan mail in the first place, and I know you can't see it all. Um, I'll try and move it back, there you go. Uh, yeah, really like this one a lot. The only thing that lets it down probably for me is the ending with the guitar. I remember that being a bit, oh, okay. But just the setting is brilliant and the introduction and everything. It's totally my era um, because I'm a big fan of history and especially this time in history. So, yeah. And then we've got a couple of Jodie books. We've got Molten Heart, which was okay. Um, again, it took me quite a while to read, but I have read it. Um, and finally, The Good Doctor, which I probably finished reading last year, early 2020. Yeah, it was okay. Again, better than Molten Heart. It was quite good, actually. You know, if this was televised, it would be a good story. Um, but again, it took me a while to get through. Um, and I don't really know why that is. So yeah, that's all my book collection, apart from I can't do a book collection without these bad boys who are just beside me. Yeah. Can you guess what they are yet? It's the, the Mr. Men books. Now, I haven't got all of them, stupidly. Well, not stupidly. I bought them individually when they first came out. And looking back, I wish I got the... like the, You can get a big box set of them, uh, 1 to 13. And I wish I did that because it worked out a lot cheaper. And they came in a nice box. But it's a shame. Oh, well. We've got Doctor First, which is a lovely book about um, Susan. And it, it captures all the Doctors perfectly, really. Doctor Second, a museum with Jamie and Victoria, very enjoyable. Doctor Third, again, I don't really remember too much about this one. It was Bessie, just a chase around in Bessie with some villains. Um, and I have a lot of nostalgia for the Mr. Men books growing up, so these are very nice. Doctor Fourth, again, a really good one. Um, a chase around a village, I think. Fifth Doctor, <laughs> this one's classic, in the supermarket with Adric Nissa Tegan and the Master. Brilliant. The Sixth Doctor, really, ooh, 
really like this one actually. Um, it's set on like a blue planet with the Rani, I believe. There you go, there's the Rani and the blue planet. My favourite Doctor, Doctor Seven. Not one of my favourite uh, Mr. Men books, sadly, um, but still an enjoyable one with Ace and the Cheetah people. We've got the Eighth Doctor, the first ever Mr. Men book that I got, actually, weirdly enough, and I don't really know why it was this Doctor, because I don't have a big connection to the Eighth Doctor. I think it's because the Sea Devils and the Silurians were in it, maybe. Uh, and penultimately, we've got Doctor Eleventh, which is very good. And Doctor Thirteenth, which is about a birthday party, I think, for someone. Well, there you go. So the only ones I'm missing off the Mr. Men are 9 and 10. And 12, weirdly. But, hey. So there you go, everyone. That was my book collection. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next video, which hopefully is my target book collection. I'm just waiting for a couple more to arrive in the post. Because um, I have got some ordered. And then I'll be sure to do a collection on them. So stay tuned for that. Really appreciate it. If you could like and subscribe. We're so close to 300 subscribers now. So come on. A final stretch. Let's do this. Once again, thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Which will hopefully be quite soon. Bye for now.